You know, as we were praising and worshiping, one of the things the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, the level you worship is where the level of your walk. The level of your worship is the level of your walk. That means that the deeper you get in, the more of him is in you. And the more you're able to do, the more you're able to overcome, the more power you walk in. Because the deeper you get into the spirit, into his presence, the less of you, because self cannot access the presence of, of God. It's repulsive to him. Only the new creation can come in. So the level of our worship is the level of our walk. Now, you can worship without a true heart and just go through the motions. But if you're truly a seeker, and the Word of God says, the Father seeks those who will worship Him in truth and spirit. Can you imagine Father God looking for you? He walks, He searches, and He sees who's really seeking Him. And He says, that's the one, there's one, there's one. Why? Because when you get His attention... You change. Because you, cha you touch his heart, he touches yours. And you will leave different every time. Every time. But the whole thing is accessing. Accessing the presence of God. It's free access to anyone willing to pay the price of denying yourself. Because you can't bring your luggage into his presence. You came here naked and you enter naked. All glory. <laughs> Is everybody okay? So it depends on how much you want of him. You know, people lose battles because of the lack of presence. That's the bottom line. Why do people lose the battles? And you know, a battle can be a short battle. It can be the quickest little short battle you've ever had. And the enemy will draw you in. He tries to draw you in. Into his ring. But if you're not filled with the Spirit of God and empowered, you'll go into the ring and react. See, the Word tells us that there's places when the battle belongs to the Lord. God wants to fight through us, but we must stay out of the way. So we're to cooperate and line ourselves up with him. Never go before him. He goes before you. Does everybody understand? Oh, praise God. That's why it says he's a consuming fire. Well, you want a consuming fire going before you, not behind you. Hello? In Psalm 61, Hallelujah. Psalm sixty one. Is everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it together because what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. When you sow in the spirit, you what? Reap life. How many of y'all want to reap life? Amen. Well, you have to be a real moron not to want to reap life. <laughs> Amen. When we were deceived, we were reaping death. Amen. Well, we were real morons. That's why. But until we got born again, hello? Not hatched, born again of the spirit. Amen. <laughs> Verse 1, Psalm 61. Let's speak it. Hear my what? Cry. That is the desire for God to hear you. It doesn't mean tears. There's a desire. Because see, people cry and really, they just cry because they cry. They're, they allow their emotions to mess with them all the time. I know people that cry. They get full buckets. And they're still the same. 
See, the cry here is, I desire you to hear me. I desire you more than anything in the world, but for you to hear me. Hear my cry, O God. Attend to my what? My prayer. From the end of the earth, I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. So what's this cry? Lord, I want you to hear. I want you to hear, and I want to hear you. What I want, I want you to lead me. I don't want man to lead me. I want you to lead me. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Verse 3. For you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. For you, O oh God, have heard my vows. Have heard my what? Vows, commitments, cries, prayers. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. You will prolong the king's life. Are you called to be kings? Yes. So he's talking about you now. My years, his years are many generations. He shall abide behind, before God forever. Oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve us. Verse 8, let's say it. I will sing praises to your name forever that I may daily perform my vows. Vows. Daily vows. What's a daily vow? Those are vows of reset. Those are vows of reset. They are vows of prayer. What he just asked for, that he may daily perform his vows, he was asking, Lord, I welcome your presence to perform the required daily vows to establish your kingdom. In other words, there are your personal daily vows. They are your prayers that connect to God. Why? Because without prayer, you're nothing. So many people skip prayer. They're still doing, throwing up a Hail Mary. Listen, it's not about how much you pray, it's about your relationship. Amen? Because even the Lord warned about all these people standing up praying all these prayers in places, and they say, he doesn't even know me. But he just wants to be seen. So we got to understand something. We must welcome his presence to perform the required daily vows to establish a personal relationship. Because your prayer is connection. You are praying, you are crying to him, you are calling out on his name so that you can cre cre uh, reconnect to him. In other words, these are called vows of reset. Every day we must reset. Does everybody get that? You must reset your faith. You must reset your commitment. Why? Because yesterday's gone. It's gone. If you try to live on yesterday's prayers, you will fail. Amen. Psalm 71. It says his mercies are new every morning. Psalm 71. Everybody there? Amen. Vows of reset. Hmm. Verse 1. In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. In what? Cause me. Cause me. Cause me. Cause me. Not cause me. Cause me. <laughs> cause me to what? Escape. In other words... If you'll set a prayer, in other words, he, does he know the way of escape yet? No. He doesn't. 
But he's asking him to cause him the way of escape. He's not asking him for the way of escape. He's saying, cause me to escape. He doesn't know how God's going to bring an escape. But it's going to happen. Sometimes you're not concerned. And how are you going to do that? Who cares? Sometimes he just wants you to trust that he's going to do it. Amen? Cause me to escape. Basically from yourself. Hello? Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong refuge to which I may resort when? Continually. There is the key word. Continually. Now, do you need to be reset to do a continuous thing? Yes. So you need to be reset every day. It's like reboot. It's like reconnect. See, when you get reset, you can get reconnected. When you get reconnected, you get refreshed. So the level of your worship is going to determine how much refreshing you get. Continually, for you have given the commandment to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Verse 4, let's speak it. Deliver me, O my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. For you are my hope, O Lord God. You are my trust from my youth. By you I have been upheld from birth. You are he who took me out of my mother's wombs. My praise shall be continually of you. So in other words, he will be his resort. He'll be his source. We got a lot of resources, but there's only one source. Amen. Continually. Continually. My praise will be continually. What's he looking to do? Keep connected. Keep connected. Keep connected. I become a wonder to many. A wonder to many. <laughs> in other words, a sign and wonder. Why? Because if you're connected, you'll be a sign and wonder. I become a as a wonder to many, but you are my strong refuge. So he was giving glory to God for him being a sign and wonder. Let my mouth be filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. That's called continually. Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Do not forsake me when my strength fails. For my enemies speak against me, and those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together, saying, God has forsaken him. Pursue and take him, for there is none to deliver them. Have you ever heard or felt that God has forsaken you? Don't raise your hand, because then you would lie if you didn't. <laughs> Verse 12, or... Pursue and take him, for there is none to deliver him. Everybody has a moment where they thought God had left them. Amen. Amen. Verse 12. Oh God, do not be far from me. Oh my God, make haste to help me. Let them be confounded and consumed who are adversaries of my life. Let them be covered with reproach and dishonor who seek my hurt. But I will hope when? Well, man, he's got praise continually. He's got glory all day long. And he's going to be his source continually. I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. He's going deeper and deeper. My mouth will tell of your one righteousness and your salvation all the day long. For I do not know their limits. In other words, he knows that there are no limits in God. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of your righteousness, of yours alone. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth, and to this day I declare your wondrous works. Now also when I am old and gray-headed, O oh God, do not forsake me until I declare your strength to this generation and your power to everyone who is to come. Verse 19, also your righteousness, O oh God, is very high. You who have done great things, O oh God, who is like you? You who have shown me great and severe trouble shall revive me again and bring me up again from the depths of the earth. You shall increase my greatness and comfort me in every side. Also with the lute I will praise you and your faithfulness, O my God. To you I will sing with the harp, O Holy One of Israel. My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing to you and my soul when you have redeemed 
which you have redeemed. My tongue, everyone say tongue, also shall talk of your righteousness all the day long. For they are confounded, for they are brought to shame who seek my hurt. Why? Because of my vows of reset every day. Is everybody okay? Deliverance and escape are caused by vows of reset. Now, grab something here. All of these psalms are vows of reset. Somebody get it? That's what David wrote. That's what the psalmists were always writing. They were looking to be reset for a way of escape. They were looking to be refreshed. They were looking to be reconnected every time because they know the danger of being disconnected. There are people who call themselves believers have never been connected in their life. They've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit because they rely on their goodness and their good acts instead of the presence of God. Psalm 34. Psalms of vows of reset. When there is a reset, there is a reposition. When you are repositioned, there is a divine order. I'm going to say this again. When you are reset, when you are reset, there's a reposition that happens. There's a divine order that manifests in your life. See, without divine order, our mission and destiny cannot be fulfilled. That's why these are called psalms or prayers of reset. Verse 1, Psalm 34, let's speak it. I will bless the Lord when I feel like it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord when I'm in trouble. <laughs> I will bless the Lord when he blesses me. <laughs> no, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall what? Continually be in my mouth. My soul will make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around all those who fear the Lord. Where there's a reset, there's a restoring of the reverence and honor and respect to God. It's called fear. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want or lack to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Again, these are psalms or prayers or vows of reset. Again, when you are reset, when God resets you, you get repositioned. See, people begin to drift from position and don't realize it. The next thing, they're, they're out of position totally. They're driving on the other side of the road. Ready for a head-on collision with trouble. That's why you reset every day, no matter what. You don't do it about feelings, you do it no matter what. Because God can't trust someone who's going to just do it when they feel like it. He trusts someone that's continually consistent, whether how they feel, how they think, or what they're going through, or wherever they are. Psalm 16. How are you going to perform your daily vows? Prayer. 
Amen? Psalm 16, verse 11, uh, 7. We're going to stop by 7-Eleven in this one. <laughs> and get a refreshing drink. <laughs> Will they call them pops? No, what do they call them? Polar pops? I call them popsicles for adults. Hallelujah. Verse 7. Is everybody there? I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul and shield, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures of forevermore. When somebody's miserable, it's because they're not in God's presence. The counsel of the Lord comes by sowing prayers. It says that he visited them in the night. He released counsel to them. How many of y'all know God can release counsel to you while you're sleeping? Counsel comes by sowing the vow of prayers that reset, reconnect, and bring counsel. He's called the spirit of counsel. One thing that happens when counsel comes, there's a refreshing. Why? Because it's refreshed by revelation. You get refreshed by revelation and his presence. Without reset, you cannot truly set him before you. You will set yourself before him. That's what reset does. It puts the Lord back in front of you again. Then you can, he can lead you, guide you, and he can consume your enemy. <laughs> if you can't overcome yourself, your tongue, your thoughts, or your feelings, there's not been a reset. And when there can't be a reset, and if this goes on for a period of time, you need deliverance because a place of a demon is accessed and stopping this. You just need to go look in the mirror and get rid of it. And don't worry if the mirror breaks. Man, just go and look in your own eyes. If you see somebody waving at you, get rid of it. <laughs> Acts 3. Hallelujah. And don't punch the mirror. It doesn't work. Hello? Believe me, I, I, I've seen people take their own heads and slam them against walls to try and get rid of these demons. What do you think happens to an individual? Did you ever hear about somebody throwing themselves down and all kinds of stuff and running themselves and... Those are demons, and they're trying to get rid of them, but they just don't know it. They're trying to get rid of what's in them. Acts 3, verse 18. Uh, let's start at verse 17. Yet now, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all his prophets, that the Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be what? Converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Now, this is powerful. Repent, think about this, means reset. 
That's what repent is. Reset yourself. Repent. Why? Because you're going to repent of all the agreements that resulted in an offense to Christ. You're turning away. Again, if you're unable to turn away, then you're in a cycle, and the Spirit has got you holding there to constantly repeat. Repent is associated with reset. Why? Because you get washed with the blood when you truly repent. But you must be truly repentant. That means you must turn away from it. Amen? Amen. Acts 8. So when you're actually going to the Lord and you're repenting for things, you're asking Him to reset you, reposition you, reconnect you, refresh you. Oh, happy days. 818. Uh oh. Is everybody there? Now, there was this guy named Simon who practiced witch, witchcraft, and uh, he got saved. So he was following the apostles. And in verse 18, it says, When Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Spirit was given, and he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. So he wanted to do the same thing. But Peter said to him, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of your wickedness and pray. God, if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you, have, that you are what? Poisoned by what? Bitterness and bound by iniquity or what we call curse. Of course, in Simon, this guy Simon answered and said, pray to, pray to the Lord for me that none of these things which you have spoken may come upon me. What's he need to do? Pray himself. Hello. The man that practiced witchcraft, he got saved, wanted the same power of the anointing to follow him and tried to purchase it with physical money. Some people try to purchase it with just physical works. Peter replied that this man's heart was not right and he was bound by bitterness and iniquity of curse. Again, he asked for prayer instead of going to prayer himself. See, God is willing to deliver each and every one of us. Does everybody understand that? What can a man do that God can't? Hello. I was leaving service the other night, and somebody approached me and asked me to pray with them. And I said, no. But I'll agree with what you pray. So they prayed, and I agreed with them because they were asking. And I could feel the presence of God begin to leave my body and go into theirs because Friday night was a great anointing. It was powerful. See, if people would have the faith to receive and believe, they'd be free. If they would worship and get to that level, but it's no longer them, but him. If they would truly cry out to God in worship, not by just tears, but a true cry that says, I want to know you. I am desperate for you. I can do nothing without you. God will reset. He'll begin to exchange things in your life. We prayed the prayer Friday night to break the walls down. We call destructive fire on the walls. 
and all the walls that had labels because that's what the Holy Spirit showed. Everybody should have left free that night if they believe. Oh, James 5, I'm sorry, verse 13. Can't read my own writing sometimes. Oh, happy days. Is everybody okay? James 5, verse 13. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. If any among you is suffering, let them pray for themselves. That's exactly what he's saying. Go pray. <laughs> is anyone cheerful? Let them sing psalms. Praise God. Maybe after you reconnect, you'll be cheerful then. <laughs> Is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith, everyone say prayer of faith. Prayer. How are you going to have a prayer of faith if you haven't had any pray vows or prayers of uh, vows or reset? Amen? Yeah. If you haven't been praying the prayer of reset, how can you pray the prayer of faith? Won't happen because you're not connected. There's got to be a life flow from the throne room. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Confess your sins, your transgressions to one another. All right? And pray for one another that you may be healed. So I pray for every single one every day to be healed. It's a part of my prayer time in the morning. Everyone has come through here, everyone. Lord, every single one, heal them. I, come, I bind the powers of darkness that will come against your healings every single day. But it's not up to me to receive it. It's up to you. Is everybody Okay. Hallelujah. Suffering, let them pray. <laughs> pray the prayer of faith. It's a prayer after reset. Many don't receive because lack of faith. Lack of daily vows to reset. Many repent but show no fruit of their repentance. I'm going to say that again. People repent but don't show fruit of the repentance. Living a life of control because of unbelief. That God can't do it. They don't believe God can do it. Remember, believe is to follow the ways of Christ. Amen? Not only his ways, but his conduct and his character. People just don't believe. Hebrews 3. Hebrews 3.12. Is everybody okay? Amen. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of what? Unbelief. And departed from the living God, but exhort one another daily, daily, daily. While it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ, if, that means that you must cooperate. If what? We hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. That means that you hold on, that you are connected all the way to the end. But some people got saved and never really got connected. They've never been connected their whole life. They still live a life of carnality. Live a life of outer court. There was a, I had a board meeting the other day and they were voting in a, a new board member. They said, does anybody have any questions? I said, yes, I do. 
And they said, what is it? I said to him, when was the last time you cast out a devil? Boy, did it get quiet over there. <laughs> and, and, and the one person in the board said, he's serious. <laughs> And uh, there was a long delay there. <laughs> I won't go any further with it. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, if you are not in a place of reset, how are you going to cast out a devil? Especially out of yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hebrews 3, verse 12. Is everybody there? Oh, we did this already. Let's go. Verse 14. <laughs> For we have become partakers of Christ if we what? If we hold fast to the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the what? And that means that you must fulfill your vows. Daily pray, daily connect, daily reset. While it said today if you will hear his voice and do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt, which means bondage, led by Moses? Now with whom was he angry 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest? But those who what? Did not obey. So we see that they could not enter because of what? unbelief. Wow. Life of torment. It's a life of fear, life of insecurity because of the lack of reset, reconnect, and refresh caused by unbelief that God is able to do it. You know, you ever see those stickers that says, just do it? There's even t-shirts that say, just do it. Why do people want control? Because they don't believe God can do it. It's called unbelief. Does everybody get this? In other words, where is this impression of unbelief coming from? It's promoted by fear. It's promoted by insecurity. It's promoted by experiences of life's issues. But again, we're to be cutting loose from these things and walking away from them. Amen? And you can't cut loose unless you reset. You must reset. And again, I can tell you that the prayer, the prayer, that prayer booklet that we have, it's a reset prayer. It says penetrating prayer, but it causes reset. These psalms in here cause reset. The word of God will cause reset. What does it do? It resets you, repositions you. Because when you're repositioned, now there's flow of life and divine order comes, divine nature comes. Character. Of Christ comes. Is everybody all right? Amen. Psalm 63. Vows of reset. Glory. Psalm 63. The Lord has brought me up by his spirit in the area to where he always says to me, show me. Show me. Show me. Show me. When he asked me one day when it all began, do you want a new life? you want to get off drugs and alcohol? I knew what he was asking. I had to give up everything. Wife, children, business, life. See, so even when he begins, so when I said, I want a new life, he said, show me. Show me that you want a new life. Show me. And I'll give you a new life. I'll give you a new wife. I'll give you a new everything, even though it's the same. 
See, but once you and I move away from that again, things become old again. Does everybody get this? So there's got to be a constant reset to make it new all the time. So what are you doing? You're showing him. You're showing him. You're showing him. Then it's being a constant. If you're continuous in this, you can't go back. Amen? You can't go back. If you're continuous and reset, reconnect, things get restored. But they come his way, not ours. You won't have to go chase it. He'll send it. Unless he tells you to get on a plane and go somewhere to get it. You know. <laughs> Hallelujah. He put me on a plane. He said, go get the girl that divorced you for three years. She was in New Mexico. I didn't buy the tickets, though. She sent them. Isn't that wild? Yeah. <laughs> See, she, we thought I was going away forever for a long time in prison. And we really never said goodbye. We just got divorced. So we were just closing things off. She said, I'll give you a vacation for a couple days. Come to New Mexico before you go to prison. That's the least I could do. Okay. Didn't know we were going to get remarried. I wasn't wanting to get remarried. But I did whatever God wanted me to do. I didn't know if I could love someone the way I love him. And I didn't want anything to ever interfere with my love from him. But he told me I would give you the love for your wife. And I'll give you the love for the people. But if you look for love anywhere else, it won't be from me. It will fail. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 63. So we reset all the time to get that refreshing of God's love also. Because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for God's love. We're looking for his presence. Verse 1, oh God, you are my God. What does it say? Early. Everyone say early. early. Not when I feel like it. Early. You're going to be first. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. I have looked for you in a sanctuary. Where are we at? It's not a sanctuary till we come together, amen? Because I, I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. What was he talking about? Well, you know, when there's corporate prayer, I mean, corporate praise, corporate worship, again, depending on the level of your worship. Now, that also depends on the music. The level of music. I can't hang around the cross in, in, too long. I love the cross, the old rugged cross. Thank you. But Jesus paid the cross for me. I was birthed at the cross. Now I walk from the cross. It overshadows me. But now I'm led by the Spirit. Why the cross overshadows me. Does everybody get it? Now I just want more of pre his presence. I want home here. Verse 3, because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall what? Praise. Praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches because you have been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. My soul follows close behind you. Hello? Why? Because he's been reset and the Lord is in front of him. Oh, your right hand upholds me. But those who seek my life to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be like a portion of, for jackals. But the king 
shall rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him shall glory, but the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. Early will I seek you, personally and corporately, to access your presence, power, glory, and love so I can get a reset. Amen? Amen. Titus 3. Again, repent is the same as reset. You get an opportunity to go do your vows of reset when you repent. Titus 3. Starting at verse 1. Let's speak it. Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly, that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. But then he warns us. But avoid what? Foolish disputes, genealogies, contentions, and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and useless. In other words, he's talking about reset, reconnect, refresh. We'll bring a renewing. Amen? Washing of the blood through the repentance and refreshing of the Holy Spirit's presence through the vows of reset, continually to maintain good conduct, character conduct of Christ Jesus. Why? Because it's his good conduct and character in us that will produce good works. How can you do good works with a heathen conduct? It counts for nothing. Amen? Colossians 3. Colossians 3. You know, God is always trying to bring us through the process of deliverance and healing. Always. And verse 1. If then you were what? Raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting, at the right hand of God, set your thoughts on the things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden in Christ, in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members, which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry. And because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and you've put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If any has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must forgive them. Renewed in the knowledge, which is called the word, through experiences and revelations, I can tell you that through reset, you will experience more revelations. 
If you're a person willing to do whatever it takes and reset so that you can reconnect, you'll have more revelations that will be able to keep the restraints on you of the works of the flesh. And I'm going to close at something here. <laughs> Let's close at 2 Corinthians 4. Oh, happy days. Is everybody all right? Yeah. Are you getting this? 2 Corinthians 4, verse 13. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. And since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore we do not what? We don't lose heart, we don't quit, we don't delay, we don't hesitate. We continually perform our daily vows. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. So does it take cooperation to renew your inward man? Yes. Without cooperation, he will not be renewed. For our light affliction which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So in other words, you're going to go through stuff so God can cause you to reset. You're going up through enough stuff to your family say, man, I got to do something about this. Reset. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are what? Seen, but the things that are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things that are not seen are eternal. Reset every day by prayers of reset, vows of reset. So when you reset, you will get the end result is refreshed and renewed, reconnected, and God can reposition you so that the river of life and the divine order can come and flow expressing the divine nature of God every day. Amen? No matter where you go, you can't be overcome. You will overcome everything. Because it's Christ overcoming. Amen? You know, there was something that somebody was talking to me about and, uh, and the Holy, when the Holy Spirit began to talk to me about some of this stuff and about unbelief. And he said to me, my temple... My temple. He kept saying, my temple, my temple. Do you know you're his temple? Amen. Now, think about this for a second. Talk about as a man thinks, so he is. Does God have any sickness or disease? Are you the temple of God? Then sickness and disease can't stay. We allow it to stay. It can't stay. Amen? Amen? A demon can't stay. We allow it to stay. That's why it's important to reset. And don't make place for the devil. The word tells us and warns us about it. Amen? Be careful what comes out of this mouth. Praise God. Father, we are honored and blessed and we thank you for your word. We ask in repentance for all of these unfulfilled vows, for all areas that we have not sought thoroughly and taken the authority and false agreements with unbelief. We ask, Father, today in the name of Jesus that you would not only cleanse us with the blood of Jesus, but that you would heal us through the stripes of Jesus as covenant children. Reset us, restore us, renew us, refresh us and resend us so that we may be your signs and wonders to this world in Jesus' name. Nobody said amen?